uh, let's begin uh, by looking at uh, building a header. So I have a um, completely fresh page here, uh, recently converted uh, from the old uh, UI editor into the new responsive engine. And uh, these are the first steps that I'd take. Um, I would adjust the width of the page, uh, well, actually change the container layout to a uh, column, uh, and then adjust the width uh, to, uh, let's go for, uh, that value there of 1,240, quite a standard value, and you'll see why the 40 is important in a moment. Um, and let's build in uh, our header. So I'm adding a group in at the top, and uh, we're going to make this group into a row because it's going to be a row of elements starting with a logo, some menu items, etc. Uh, and uh, we make that fixed width 100. Um, and a lot of the things you'll notice that I'm doing, uh, they are uh, because I've got the responsive nature of my app in mind. Um, like I could put a fixed pixel value in here of the width of my page, but because I want it to be responsive, I'm saying fill up the full width of the page, no matter how wide it is. And to really show that, uh, let's, let's begin to make this look a little bit more like a common dashboard. App. So I'm going to change the page background to a uh, slight off gray color. And then in uh, our header, we're going to make it white, just so it stands out. Um, something that I really like to do and build into my apps that I think um, offers a, a, a clear, uh, in, like unified design is to have a um, 20 pixel margin down the left hand side of each element. That just stops when um, your web app shrinks down onto like tablet or mobile, it stops your elements from kind of looking unneat and touching the side of the screen. So how do I go about that? Well, if I have my header here, and I'm gonna call this outer container, I then put an inner container inside this element. And this time, uh, so this is also going to be a type row, uh, this time the width is going to be uh, a max width. Um, and so the max width is going to be the width of the UI builder in my editor, minus 20 from one side and minus 20 from the other side. So that would leave me with uh, 1,200. And then uh, if I, oh, okay, let's change this into a column. There we go, and now that's it. I can center it in the column. Uh, let's uh, just adjust the height. Uh, so the height is going to be 100% of its container, of the outer container. And uh, let's start to add in, um, instead of uploading an image, I'm just going to add in an icon as a logo. Uh, And so the icon uh, is, let's expand our element tree. Here we've got our inner container. Uh, and so the icon, I want to align to the left. Uh, and we'll center it using the vertical alignment. And uh, let's begin to put in some navigation links. Uh, we have a video talking about, uh, on our YouTube channel, talking about the difference between using a text um, element with a workflow to navigate versus using a link element. If you are linking through to another page and uh, SEO is important to use a link element uh, because Google sees that and recognizes that it's a link within the HTML, the same can't be said for uh, if you have a workflow directing you to another page. So uh, let's just adjust our link so we could have uh, home and then uh, our width is going to be fit to content, but and then we remove the min width and that snaps it back into the exact size of the text. Uh, let's set a fixed height and just reduce that uh, down. And then we can center it. So I now want my logo to be on my left hand side and I want the text to be on the right hand side of my menu items. So if I create a few more here 
Um, let's call this uh, uh, directory. And let's call this settings. So if I want to move them over to the left, uh, over to the right hand side of my container, and I go into my container settings here, um, if I move to the right, everything goes to the right. If I say create space between, everything gets you a uniform space between them. So the way around that is to, uh, if I put them over to the left, first of all, group them together, I'm holding shift and clicking, and then right click and uh, group them into a row. And then I'm going to, again, because I've got the responsive, uh, building responsively in mind, I'm going to remove the min width um, because that's just something that I've noticed can come back and, and kind of bite you and annoy you later on. I, I want it to be fit to the width of the content. When I created that group around it, Bob will put in that min width value and I don't need it, so I've got rid of it. Uh, let's for clarity label this right. And then I can now do the equal space between. And you see that I have my logo on my left and my uh, text navigation on my right. Let's tidy up this text navigation a bit. Um, now, this is a really nice, uh, well, one of the many nice features in the new response engine, and that is apply gap spacing between elements. So what I could do, or what you might have ended up doing something similar in the old um, UI editor, was uh, having to apply um, margins to items. So if I wanted a space of 30 pixels between each element, I could go through and put a 15 pixel margin on each side. Um, but then I end up with 15 pixels on the uh, left of the item and also on the right of my final item. So it's not gonna line up so nicely. That's where uh, the gap becomes really helpful. Gap between elements, and then my column gap is 30. And then no matter how many if I copy and paste this menu items I place in there, then it gives you that nice uniformed gap between them. What else do I want to explain at this point? Uh, we've got rows for menu, centered, max, width, container. Um, we should see what it looks like. So remember, I've got my outer container and my inner container, and it's my inner container that is centered, that is confining uh, my uh, menu items to the middle of the screen and not aligning right to the left hand or the right hand edge. Um, that's quite a popular look at the moment. Uh, although, of course, you could have them uh, full screen. Uh, what else shall we add in here? Okay, let's look at responsive because uh, this is the new responsive editor after all. Um, so if we have a look at our page, it shrinks all the way down. Okay, and then we get to a point where it's not working quite so well. So let's debug that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to add in that 20 pixel spacing because what I don't like is that when the page shrinks down, uh, I've not got a nice gap around uh, either my logo or my text here. Uh, so I'm going to go into my inner container that I created and add to the left 20 pixels padding and add to the right 20 pixels padding. That then means that when I shrink it down, I get a much uh, neater design. Um, let's have a look at a few more things. If I have many more items in my navigation here, what happens now? Okay, so it pushes it onto another line and then there's still some sort of max width that's taking, uh, min width rather, that's taking effect. Uh, here we go, I'll get rid of that. So now it, it properly crushes all together. Um, and we're gonna come back and look at how you would replace all of that row of text labels, menu navigation items, and how you would replace them with a hamburger icon or the, the mobile menu icon.